Paddington turned on a windy day for the official opening at Strathmore Park of the 20,000th State House. As Mr. Nash said, you can't have a home without a house. And this is the 20,000th house that has been made into a home. Other speakers reminded us that New Zealand has built more houses during the war than any other country. Mr. Semple hands the keys to Mrs. Sawyers, the first tenant, a young war widow with two children. The 20,000th house is declared officially open and the public follow on in their turn to inspect it. At Newtown Zoo, there's an air of excitement these days. For the fourth time in six years, the zoo has succeeded in breeding cranes in captivity. The zoo is proud of the fact that this is the only place in the world where cranes have been born in captivity outside their native home of India. The little demoiselle cranes are still a bit wobbly, and the parents are quite modest about it all. They said, we just had a visit from a stork. Taking indoor sports outdoors is a part of the program of the progressive Invercargill City Council. On one of the reserves, they've built an outsized drafts board for the Invercargill Drafts Club. Playing black in the opening game is Mr. Hutchins, former Southland champion. His opponent playing white is Mr. Donald, president of the club. They're coming down the straight now, and at a hard-fought tussle, Hutchins trumps his opponent's pawns and touches down behind the winning post. The going's a bit tough for your sports commentator, but this first outdoor drafts ball in Australasia is a fine thing for Invercargill oldsters. Outdoor drafts in the outdoor breezes adds to the interest to be found in the open air. In Christchurch, the New Zealand Bowling Association's victory tournament attracts bowlers from all over New Zealand. 1,860 of them poured into the city to spread out over 28 greens to make it the biggest bowling event in the Dominion for many years. This is probably the biggest tournament in the world. Keen competition in singles, pairs and fours attracted plenty of spectators on the banks. Of course, there were the usual poses to be seen. It must be something in the way you hold your mouth. Some of the players get a real kick out of it all. Close play, fine weather and good bowling found the packed crowd seething with excitement. Benchfuls of buyers faced the sales ring at Trentham for the 20th national sale of thoroughbred yearlings. Buying is brisk, and a chestnut coat by Baddock out of Royal Sister soon passes the thousand guinea mark. At 1,550 guineas, this coat finds a new owner. Some of those present scraped up quite a lot for a horse. Lot 44, a brown filly, also sired by Barrack, is keenly sought after and brings 1,300. This handsome black coat by Neptune out of La Poupe realizes 2,000. Bloodstock prices are certainly booming this year, and with such keen competition, it looks as if all records are going to be broken. Australian buyers are particularly active, and so are some of the horses. A chestnut coronac coat also shows plenty of spirit in the ring and at 1,900 guineas becomes the property of Mr. C.C. C. Davis of Christchurch. It is lot 119 that buyers are waiting for. This Foxbridge Anne Acre colt is full brother to last year's record-priced yearling. Bidding starts at 1,000 and in two more bids is raised to 3,000. With three more of 250, a new record of 3,750 guineas is established. This price is paid by Mr. Ken Austin on behalf of Australian buyers. Fine weather and the prospect of good racing brought a record crowd to Trentham for the first day of the Wellington Racing Club summer meeting. The gate receipts were the highest ever recorded and the tote was the highest in the club's history. Lady, would you mind moving your shoulder? Thank you. For the big race of the day, the Wellington Cup, 18 starters faced the two-mile journey with Golden Souvenir, the favourite, carrying 9-1. They're off and they're all away. Halcyon is badly left, Golden Souvenir is slow away, and out in front goes Irish Note. Irish Note takes the lead now from Saludos on the inside of Financial with uh, Lowry Bay going up to be on the outside of Irish Note. There's Port Royal received the check there back in about fifth place. 
Then we've got Severity on the outside of Fort Royal with Glenn Fallick on the outside of these two. And as they come on round past the mile and three quarters, two lengths behind Severity, we've got Authentic on the inside of Aurora and Trailers. Then Golden Souvenir on the inside of Miss Medley, Western Front on the outside of these two. And they're followed then, they're followed then by Longsword, Foxhaven on the inside of Longsword, Expanse on the inside of these two. They come on round towards the turn into the straight for the first time, and the leader now is Lowry Bay. Lowry Bay and the leaders, they come on round towards the mile and a half post. They're followed then by Irish Note, Financial on the outside of Irish Note, then Saludos on the fence, Lang Dior on the outside of Saludos. Then we've got Fort Royal, Ben Fallick on the outside, Golden Souvenir down on the rail. Here's Severity coming up on the other now to race up to be on the outside of Financial and about second or third place equal with Lang Dior on the inside. And at the rear of the field, we've got Aurora Australis and Foxhaven and Miss Medley and Expanse. Now they come down past the big stand for the first time. They've got just over a round to go, and Lowry Bay bowls along in front. They go past the mile and a quarter post, and the leader's Lowry Bay now from Irish Note. They are the first two as they go on down the straight, followed by Financial with Saluda on the inside of Financial. Then Severity on the outside of Lang Dior as they go round the turn, closely followed by Port Royal on the inside of Authentic. And then we've got Elton on the outside of Glen Fallock, then Golden Souvenir on the fence. Western Front pulling hard on the outside of Golden Souvenir. And then Expanse with Medley on the outside of Expanse. Silver Sale just ahead of these two, a length and a half for Aurora Australis. And Foxhaven improving his position there as they race past the mile post to go up from the back into about ninth place. They swing round into the back and Lowry Bay is still the leader. They go on down the back and travel past the five furlong post and Financial's gone into the lead. Financial's gone into the lead. Lowry Bay drifted right back there. Irish Oats in second place. And Irish Oats goes up on the inside of Financial. And they come on round towards the four, and Irish Note goes into the lead from Financial on the outside, then two lengths and salute us. They come on round towards the three, and then Expanse and Glen Fallick together with Miss Medley just behind them, and Longsword losing a lot of ground, and Aurora Australis right towards the rear. They come on round towards the turn, they come round the bend with two furlongs to go, and Irish Note is still the leader. Irish Note and salute us, and Lang Dior and Golden Souvenir right up on the outside, and with a furlong and a half to go, the four of them are in line. And Golden Souvenir is being asked the question now. Saludos coming on the inside. Lang Dior's there also. Irish Oats had enough. But Golden Souvenir is hanging on. And with half a furlong to go, Golden Souvenir goes into the lead from Saludos with Lang Dior finishing again on the other. But Golden Souvenir will hang on, I think, and Golden Souvenir gets it. And very, very close then. Fourth, second and third between Saludos on the inside of Lang Dior. And they're followed home then by Foxhaven on the outside of Severity. Then two lengths for it's a brilliant win for Golden Souvenir, number one, and his trainer and rider, Jim Ellis. Seldom have Trentham fans seen a better race. Golden Souvenir has proved himself the greatest horse of the day by winning both the New Zealand Cup and the Wellington Cup in the one season.